On, on behalf of the board members and the members of the Sutton Historical Society, thank you very much for coming. There have been warmer days. I do not know when. <laughs> <laughs> so you are indeed intrepid, and thank you for coming. And so this is Andy Jeffrey. He wrote a special song for today. It's called Going Down to Sutton to Find My Friends. <laughs> Maybe you can pull us off a bit. Mustache, pencil, thin. With fat, black, mean, slim. Little Louis Black stood looking all around. He saw over in the shadows, holding forth and holding, sweating to get at Carlos Marcelo, getting red and green, booting ears away. Otherwise, the crowd was sparrowing. And I broke in the back window, though Jody doesn't remember breaking into the back window with me to sit in here, but I know he did at least once. <laughs> so Jody is a poet, and he's going to uh, share some poetry with us. Jody Wells. This poem is called In the Circle of Dance, and uh, it was written um, for the Mount Kearsarge Indian Museum for a book, and I'd like to dedicate it to my father. It's called In the Circle of Dance. Last night, a light rain fell on Mount Kearsarge. Now, the familiar smell of new cut hay. It's one of those days when the sun and the moon are visible in the sky at the same time. Inside the tent, the host drum calls us. It's time. Time for the grand entrance. My heart. I wanted to um, show this thing. It's a fundraising facial squirt project that I'm doing. So um, for, for $50, I will come and squirt you in the face and, and pull you off. So you could be pulled off. And that $50 goes to the restoration of the schoolhouse. So, To the schoolhouse. Thank you. So, Ian Pollard from Grantham, right? Um, this is a song called uh, Washed by the Water I Need to Breathe. Well, Daddy was a preacher, and she was flighty. Trying to make the world a little better, you know, shine a light. And people started talking. See their own words. Those people try to accuse my father of making the wrong choice. And no one might be painful. It's time to go. No, no. Who's there? Pencil. 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 Uh, never mind, it's pointless. Uh, one wonders sometimes. You raise them badly, and what does it get you? If it weren't for me, would they even remember the family Quinlan? Without Mother Quinlan to keep the clan together, we might as well just trade our lace curtains for a shanty. A letter a day is what I say, so this is done at last. I, I wrote a letter to my son Michael. I, I just hope he takes it to heart. Dear son, just a few lines to let you know I'm still alive. I'm writing this letter slowly because I know you don't read so fast. 
You, you won't know the house when you come home. We've moved. <laughs> but there was a washing machine in the new house we moved in. But it doesn't work so good. But last week, I put four t-shirts into it. I pulled the chain. I haven't seen the shirts since. <laughs> About your father. He has a lovely new job. He has 500 men up with him. He mows the grass in the cemetery. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the invisible man walks into the doctor's office. The doctor said, uh, Sorry, I can't see you now. <laughs> so, uh, this is John Marshall from New York. He's someone else that came to us, sight unseen. Never met John before. So, thanks for answering that. So John's going to share a song by Boss Skaggs called yeah. I'll Be Done. Cool. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. The song has nothing to do with trains. <laughs> Sisters, Susie and Aunt Kathy, and that's Kim. And the fourth one, Holly, couldn't make it today. Hindu realms in there, Hindu veils, incense sensitizing, symbol symbolizing. I'll be praised, I'll be praised. Not the cookie finder, that could be a nation, my love. The Turkish chocolate guy should not be out of sight. Don't you wish that you were Turkish wrong or right? Turn the check of faces mecca every night down at Rick's place. Rick and Jake and Jake's place where I go picks those psycho chicks down at Rick's place. Rick's place, Homer Kayan, Homer Kayan. We know where Ruby's at tonight, oh yeah. Come back in 12 minutes. <laughs> 12 minutes! <laughs> uh, are y'all going to do a drawing? Yes. And just wanted to let you know the update on, on the facial squirt fundraiser for the schoolhouse. We just raised $6,200,000. <laughs> says a lot for how hot this day is and what people really need. So thank you for getting what you need and paying for it. Uh, Tommy, right, uh, from Newbury. And he's going to play Souvenirs by John Prime. All the snow has turned to water. Christmas days have come and gone. Broken toys and faded colors. All that's left to linger on. I ain't great enough to go on shops. For they always bring me tears. I can't stand the way they rob me. Of my childhood souvenirs. Memories that can't be bought. Get me on carnivals for free. It took me years to get those souvenirs. 
Era tamo dum pahala So here's a new friend in my life, Caroline Fairless from Wilmot. And she's a writer and she is so many things. You think I have many hats? She's got like lots of hats. So, so this is a piece I've written. Um, I've titled it A Very Special Affair. Did you hear? cries my Santa Fe friend through the static of her cell phone. She is visiting Bears Ears Monument and the cell reception is quirky. Winnie the Pooh is a girl. It's not Winnie the Pooh, I tell her. It's Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Always insisting on the accuracy of the naming. That's what Christopher Robin says and he should know. Whoever the Pooh, she comes back at me. Who is a girl? Ah! I laugh out loud, what else can I do? As I welcome the challenge to my presumption of Winnie's boy bear nest, as he inhabits books filled with stories that bring me to tears, even with its simple dedication. Hand in hand we come, Christopher Robin and I, well, uh, my sister Kim's going to come back up and sing with Greg Russell, from the singing dentist. Yep. So here you go. Heaven, I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. And it seems I find the happiness I see when we're out together dancing cheek to cheek. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'd love to climb a mountain and to reach the highest peak. But it doesn't thrill me half as much as dancing cheek to cheek. Oh, I'd love to go out fishing on a river or a creek. But I don't enjoy it half as much as dancing cheek to cheek. And my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. And I seem to find the happiness I see when we're out together dancing cheek to cheek, cheek to cheek, cheek to cheek, cheek to cheek. So we're going to hear from uh, Debbie Perkins from the Mother, and she's a writer. I'm going to read a little something I wrote for you historical tour of the Old Main Street Cemetery. The London Historical Society had a walking tour in 2007. And this is called a brave situation. Oscar Colby from Springfield was a giant of a man. He worked for John Holtine in the New London Florist and Landscaping business. But he also did odd jobs, strong as an ox, willing, resourceful, affable. Oscar was one of the handfuls of citizens who enjoyed a cold Valentine meal after a hard day's work, or even sometimes just after starting a hard day's work. <laughs> Oscar's work clothes consisted of trousers, a gray sweatshirt, streaked with the proper amount of grit, and a baseball cap, the bill of which always stood straight up to heaven. Oscar was called upon by the town to dig graves, or at least complete the finishing touches after a backhoe did its best. His signature was a, uh, his statue was of great help, being able to size up the task at hand. While standing in the grave, if Oscar could still peer over the brim, he knew he must remove, remove a little more so soil. You see, Oscar stood over six feet tall. Likewise, when horizontal, Oscar was six feet long. <laughs> in that position, if his toes and caps touched the size, he knew he had to slice out a bit more the soil on the edges. Occasionally, while perfecting a grave on a hot summer afternoon, Oscar would toss down a couple of refreshing nails, then take a moment to recline on the floor of the damp pool of grave. Frequently, if the perfection of his efforts resulted in a comfortable resting place for the dearly departed, 
Oscar would take a nap. Surprisingly, the Jesus out of anyone who came to inspect the projects. <laughs> Well, wow. if we had trains around here, Oscar Colby would have been uh, trying to slip into the trains, right? And he'd sleep in places like that and slept in his car. How many people here remember who Oscar Colby really was? He was a real person. Yeah, amazing stories. So, uh, thank you, Debbie, for coming up. Yeah. So I was wondering, what did the circle say to the eight? Nice belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> so Jake O'Neill, Jake O'Neill. So his dad is Rob O'Neill, who is a science science teacher, right? Retired science teacher. And you probably don't know this, but I had a crush on your uncle John. No, no, no. I stopped him first. Oh, you know. <laughs> But he actually likes Susie better than any of us. I'm playing a uh, tune called Wagon Wheel. It was originally written by Bob Dylan, I think, so the myth goes. Um, but it was made famous by the Old Co. Medicine Show. <laughs>
were doing 50 in a 35. And I said, oh, no, I would never do that. I never would ski through Newport. I'm just trying to get home. I've been working all week in New York. All I want to do is go home, get into my nice soft bed, and relax. And he said, okay, I'm giving you a warning. I said, okay. Next Thursday. <laughs> um, so, why did Humpty Dumpty have a great fall? He's trying to make up for a bad summer. <laughs> so this is Father Maria Bishop from North Side. And this is Dina Bishop. And they're great friends from the area, from North Sutton and New London. And they're going to do a song called May I Suggest, and this is by Susan Warner. May I suggest, may I suggest to you, may I suggest this is the best part of your life. May I suggest this time is blessed for you, this time is blessed and shining almost blinding bright. Just turn your head and you begin to see the thousand reasons that were just beyond your sight. The reasons why, why I suggest to you, why I suggest this is the best part.
still more to do to restore the schoolhouse and staying connected. You know, COVID was hard. People were apart, as you know. And I think what COVID taught me and maybe taught all of us is that we need to reach out anyway. Don't wait until we can't and then we can again. It's sort of a lesson in keep reaching, keep, keep gathering, keep gathering. This little life.